would you define Beatlemania? I couldn't define it. You know, a lot of people have tried. I'm, I'm not going to try. Leave it to the psychologists and let them get it wrong. I'm Mr. Ed. <laughs> well, one of the, your big attractions is your haircut and your uh, your manner of dress. Uh, what what prompted that? The haircuts, for instance. It just happened, you know. You just wake up one day and there you are. The Beatles. The Beatles. No, I couldn't catch on. Here, Burn, is the tea ready yet? When it started with me, George, Paul, and Ringo, and we said, listen, man, you know, here's another field of professionalism that doesn't need any qualifications except for you've got to get down to it without that pressure of the 11 plus, etc., and GC and all that. And we all discovered that uh, the values didn't mean a thing, you know, and you could make it without college and education and all those things, you know. It's nice to be able to read and write, but apart from that, I never learned anything worth a damn. First of all, we have to start with this. Apparently, the, uh, the fellows have a lot on the ball. They have a magnetism. So you take their talent, and they write their own music, by the way. Nearly every song they've recorded is, is a song that they wrote themselves. Then they have an unusual appearance, and you, you got it. a lot of it's the haircut. It's done a lot for them and the tremendous amount of promotion that they've had. Well, of course, now everybody's on the Beatle bandwagon, so it's, it's mushroom. Actually, I understand that the British word for beatnik is beetle. Instead of calling a, a beatnik, as we do over here, a beatnik, they, they call beatniks beetles. Or there. beetles. <laughs> and too, the, uh, the very word beat uh, is, has to do with their, uh, the name of their group. John thought of the name Beatles, and he'll tell you about it now. <laughs> uh, it just it means Beatles, doesn't it? You know, if that's just a name, it, you know, like shoe. It means Imagine shoe. The shoes. You see, we could have been called the shoes for all you know. The Beatles. In one meteoric year, they've led the way from the cellars of Liverpool to the national limelight. George Harrison, lead guitar. John Lennon, rhythm guitar. Paul McCartney, bass guitar. Ringo Starr, drums. A group run by Liverpool businessman Brian Epstein. Epstein was a house furnisher who had developed a sideline in gramophone record. I hadn't had anything to do with uh, pop management 
management of pop artists before uh, that day that I went down to the Cavern Club and heard the Beatles playing. And um, this was quite a new world, really, for me. Uh, I was amazed by this sort of dark, smoky, dank atmosphere, this beat music playing away. And um, the Beatles were then just four lads on that rather dimly lit stage, uh, somewhat ill-clad, and the presentation was, well, left a little to be desired as far as I was concerned. But amongst all that, something tremendous came over. And uh, I was immediately struck by their, their, their music, their beat, and uh, their sense of humor, actually, on stage. We've been to Hamburg, and I think that's where we um, found our style, we developed our style, because of this fellow there, he used to say, hey, you've got to make a show for the, the people. And he used to come up every night shouting, Mac Show. So we used to Mac Show, and John used to dance around like a gorilla, and we'd all, you know, knock our heads together and things like that. Anyway, we got back to Liverpool and all the groups that were doing this sort of shadows type of stuff. And uh, we came back, leather jackets and jeans and funny hair, macking xiao, which went down quite well. We just bought leather jackets, not, as a, not, as, not for the group. One person bought one, I can't remember, and then we all liked them, so it ended up we were all on stage with them. We'd always worn jeans because we didn't have anything else at the time, yeah. And then we went back to Liverpool and got quite a few bookings. You know, they all thought we were German. You know, we had builders from Hamburg and they all said, you speak good English, you know, <laughs> things like that. So we went back to Germany and we had a bit more money the second time. So we bought leather pants and we looked like four Jean Vincents, only a bit younger, I think. And that was it, you know, and we just kept those, the leather gear, till Brian came along. It was a bit sort of old hat anyway, all wearing leather gear. And we decided we didn't want to look sort of ridiculous, just going on because it, more often than not, sort of people, too many people would laugh. It was just stupid. We didn't want to sort of appear as a gang of idiots. And Brian suggested that we just sort of wore ordinary suits. So we just got what we thought were quite good suits and just got rid of the leather gear. Yeah, that was all. So the yeah. idea was pinched anyway. Oh, yeah, I had my pants pinched anyway. We didn't laugh at it in Liverpool. We do like the fans and enjoy reading the publicity about us, but from time to time you don't realise that it's actually about yourself. You see your pictures and read articles about you know, George Harrison, Ringo Starr, and Paul and John, uh, but you don't actually think, oh, that's me that I am in the paper. It's, it's funny, it's just as though it's a different person. When we go home, you know, it's, we go in early in the morning when we finish the job and the kids, you know, they don't know you at home. But if they find out well, where I live, they get the drums out, you know, and beat it out. Because it's a play street and, you know, there's no traffic or nothing bothering them. And once, when the boys came for me, they popped in to see me, mum and my dad, you know. We had to go out the back because, you know, there's 20 or 30 outside. And they wouldn't believe me, Mother, you know, they'd knock in saying, can we have the autographs? So it built up, you know, so much. There was about 200 kids all around the door and they was peeping through the window and knocking, you know. <laughs> in the end, <laughs> my mother was ill, you know. She was terrified out of her life, just all these kids and boys and girls and that, you know. They send us a lot of jelly babies and chocolates and things like that. Because, just because um, somebody wrote in one of the papers uh, about presents and things that we had given to us, and John said he got some jelly babies, and I ate them. But ever since that, we've been inundated. We had about two tonne a night. But the, um, the main trouble is they, they tend to throw them at us <laughs> when we're on stage. And uh, once I got one in my eye, which wasn't very nice. In fact, I've never been the same since. <laughs> It all sounds complaining that, you know, we're not, we're just putting the point, is that, you know, it affects your home more than it does yourself, you know, because you know what to expect. But your parents and your family, you know, they don't know what's happening.
people de demand that you think, how long are you going to last? Well, you can't say, you know. You can be big-headed and say, yeah, we're going to last 10 years. But as soon as you've said that, you think, you know, we're lucky if we last three months, you know. Well, obviously, we can't keep playing the same sort of music until we're about 40, because no, when we're sort of old men playing from me to you, nobody's going to want to know at all about that sort of thing. So, you know, we've thought about it, and probably the thing that John and I will do uh, will be write songs as we have been doing, as a sort of sideline now. We'll probably develop that a bit more. I hope to have enough money to go in into a business of my own by the time we um, do flop. And, um, I mean, we don't know, it may be next week, it may be two or three years, but I think we'll be in the business, either up there or down there, for at least another four years. I've always fancied having a, a lady's hairdresser, so, you know, a string of them, in fact. Um, Trot round with me stripes and me tails, you know, like a cup of tea, mother. Looking forward to this American trip. Have you had any reaction over there? You got any fan clubs going? Is there well, there's one, suppose, we started and they're, they're getting quite good response, you know. Yeah. 12,000 letters a day. <laughs> 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 but the Beatle movement's going over. Yeah. Yeah. I must cents. tell you, by the way, that Detroit University have got to stamp out the Beatle movement. Uh, no. uh, uh, yeah, we've we heard, heard about, about, you've heard about that. Detroit. They think, they, <laughs> <laughs> they think your uh, haircuts are un-American. Well, it was very observant of them, because we aren't American. The Beatles were on their way to America. Goodbye to George Harrison for a few days. And to John Lennon, here with his pretty wife, Cynthia. A Jet 707 was waiting to receive the most famous passengers to cross the Atlantic for some time. Doubts about the Beatles' reception in America were dispelled the moment they touched down. New Yorkers turned out in force, and making allowance for an American accent, the screams might have been genuine Merseyside. George, John, Paul, and Ringo had found a new world to conquer. Some press conference. For half an hour, there was so much din you couldn't tell a word. It was a matter of everybody being patient, hoping it would begin eventually. No, we need money first. <laughs> <laughs> How much money do you expect to take out of this country? Nothing. About half a crown, two dollars. Sorry, I know well, they can tell us what they think they have. How many are bald if you have to wear those things? Yeah, all of us. I'm bald. Oh, we're all bald. Don't yeah. tell anyone, please. I'm <laughs> deaf and dumb, too. Aren't you afraid of what the American Barbers Association is going to think of you? Well, we've run quicker than the English ones. We'll have a go here. <laughs> Did you understand you hope to get a haircut at all? No. Nope. No. 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 no, thanks. I had one yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> that's no lie. <laughs> no, I think you missed. No. No, he didn't. No. You should have seen him the day before. What were you going to do if you got into the press conference? We're going to speak to them and meet them. I just wanted to meet him more than anything. I love George so much, and the policemen wouldn't even believe the truth. All they have to do is believe lies. Yeah. <laughs>
your program was reviewed by a music critic and uh, oh, no <laughs> well again <laughs> and he said uh, you had unresolved leading tones a false modal frame ending up as a plain diatonic what would you uh, say to that he's well, just well, we're going to see a doctor about that <laughs> no he's just copying this the fellow in the london times did a review like that but the, the only difference is I don't know whether that's favourable or not. The London one was, you see. Yeah. Why don't you just say if it's good or bad? <laughs> what do you think of the reaction of Amer What do you think of American girls in the first place now that you've had your first contact with them? Uh, they're marvellous. Yeah, they're, right. they're the same as British girls, only they've got a different accent. Is it your ambition to continue what you're doing, or what? What do you plan to do? Yeah. Well, as long as it as long as it lasts like this. As long as the oh, money keeps. Oh, as long as we well. Uh, as long, as long as we keep enjoying it, then we'll <laughs> once we stop enjoying it and people stop enjoying it, then uh, we we'll pack, pack in. We have to pack in yeah. if people don't enjoy it. That's the British <laughs> saying, forgive up. Well, one of the, your big attractions is your haircut and your, uh, your manner of dress. Uh, what, what prompted that? The haircuts, for instance. It just happened, you know. You just wake up one day and there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what, well, what is there about the Beatles that you like? They're gorgeous! They have oh, beautiful they got beautiful. that certain something. And the name of it is A Sprout of a New Generation. It shows Paul McCartney coming up from the earth, like sprout, a sprout, a start, a new dawn. You see, the Beatles are the original. They started the look, everything. And they are the greatest group out. And here is if you notice, he's like growing. And and I like the oil paint, and I love to present the paint in the pool. And I love him to have it, and I love to meet him. Because, um... Do you I'm, think you have any chance of meeting him? Well, well, I don't really know. It's, it's really a luck because a lot of people meet them because they know somebody. But I would like to give Paul this. I'm shown I'm a true fan, and that, you know, and that, that I wouldn't tear him apart, speak to him like a decent human being, and that, he, that he's the, really the greatest in show business. It sounds like you have sort of a crush on Paul McCartney. <laughs> yes, that's true. Well, John, here is the American public. Forty million American viewers. Sounds looks like staring, one man to me. Staring you right in the face. Oh, it's the cameraman. What is your impression of the American public? You've been here for a while now. They are the wildest. Why? Well, I don't know. Tonight was, you know, mild. It's ridiculous. I, well, those eight thousand people all shouting at once, and we were trying to shout louder than them with microphones, and we still couldn't beat them. Was America something like what you thought it would be like? No, nothing like it. We thought it'd be much quieter. We thought it, you know, we'd have to grow on everybody, and everybody seems to sort of know us all, you know, as if we'd been here for years. It's great. Oh, it's the real thing because the hotel manager of the Whittier Hotel and the Muhlenbach Hotel signs an affidavit certifying that this is the beetle bedding they slept on, and who slept on what sheet, and was belongs to who, Ringo, George, or Paul. Now, when you get these things cut up into one square inches a piece, what are you going to do with them? Sell them. The velvet cloak of night shrouds the London airport. All is quiet, all is serene. But this is the lull before the storm. Thousands of Beatles fans are bedded down for the night to await the arrival of their heroes. 
When the dawn comes up like a teenage scream, the arrival of the froggy-voiced foursome is imminent. The cries of the crowd grow in pitch and volume, drowning out the whine of the jet engines. And here they are, fresh from their triumphant appearances in the United States. 12,000 young Britons roar a welcome. Their shrieks rise in an awesome wave. Our staff scientist, in an odd moment, calculated that this young mob is generating enough energy to put three Atlas missiles in orbit and power 54,000 transistor radios. Some of the fences hold, others do not. A minor miracle is mounted by the fact that there are no injuries spread among the near hysterical crowd. This truly is a social document for our time. Forty young ladies fainted, but authorities feel that some were playing possum, so that they might be lifted over the fence and thus be nearer their idols. The Beatles, who originated as a small-time act out of Liverpool, now have no rivals as the kingpins of the teenage set. You can repeat that loud and long. Some brave volunteers among the British police elect to act with heroism above and beyond the call of duty and escort the Beatles to their car. There hasn't been this much excitement at the London airport since man learned to fly. So there you have the homecoming of the Beatles, the return of the heroes to their native land. They did what the Redcoats couldn't do in the American Revolution. They conquered the colonies. Beatles haven't a chance of leaving the airport just yet. In the VIP lounge, there's an army of press, newsreel, radio, and TV interviewers waiting to ask them a question or two. The fans obviously enjoyed it over there. I, I assume the press enjoyed it. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was marvellous. Yeah, yeah, everything. Every bit of it was an arcade. Even, even the work? Yeah, we enjoyed <laughs> it. You know, it was different. Yeah. You know, working in different places yeah, with the know. audience all around us. and. You know, it was a novelty. What impressed you most about the place? Um, Do you have time to take anything in properly? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. We, I think I, I enjoyed the sun in Miami most of all. Yeah, <laughs> healthy. Are you the healthy one? Before, no, no, you? no. But the sun was sort of very healthy. healthy. Yeah, very. Healthy. Did you Did you have a chance to get away from anybody at any time on the trip? Yeah. You can't wait for me twice. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what did you most like about the trip, Ringo? Oh, I just loved all of it, you know, especially yeah. Miami. The yeah. sun, you know. <laughs> I didn't know what it meant until I went over there. <laughs> Don't you get it up in Liverpool? No, they, they finished up there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it out. Did you ever have a chance, John, to just get away on your own without yeah. anybody recognising you? We borrowed a couple of millionaires' houses, you know. Uh, yeah. Well, well you know, we did. You could afford to buy a couple of millionaires' houses, couldn't you? No. John, yeah, no, yeah. John, we'd sooner no. borrow them, it's cheaper. <laughs> and we did a bit of water skiing. Uh, well, sort of, anyway. Yeah, we had a great time. Did, you, did your wife enjoy it over there? Yeah, she loved it. Who? <laughs> Who? <laughs> Shh, don't tell him he's married. It's a secret. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean that. What about the... Uh, taste of the fans over there. Did you find the same stuff? He never been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If the, uh, we expected them to be very different, but, but they weren't at all. Yeah. <laughs> the accent was the only thing, you know, it was the only difference. Lovely. Did they reckon, did they reckon you sang in, a, in, a, in an English accent or American No, one? some fella said, how come because you're from Britain and you still sing an American accent or something? Eh? Yeah. So Funny. Then, We've been trying to explain it to him that it's a Liverpool American, accent. You know, but he yeah. believe it. He can't, oh, it's funny. We when, when you came back from France, you told me that they liked the sort of quicker numbers. Yeah. And But what did you do? You just do all the same routine as you do here? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yes, because yeah, the, 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 hit, the records were the hits over there. Mm. Are the ones that are hits Oh, yeah, over we had here. to do Please Please Me over there. Yeah. And we haven't been doing that for a long time yeah. here, but it's in the charts. That's history here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What about the, the Beatles styles, all these wigs and suits and things? Are they catching on over yeah, the same uh, 15 well. million a day? Uh, <laughs> I, hear, I hear anyway that the four of you are going to be millionaires by the end of the year. Oh, oh, oh good. that's nice. Have you got time to actually spend this money? 
What money? <laughs> you get money as well. <laughs> Doesn't he give any to you? No, no. 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 Have you seen that car of his? One of the things you did was visit Clay. What? Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> one of the things you did was visit Cl on Cassius me. Clay. <laughs> He's a big lad. Who's going to win? Clay Liston. Well, Liston. Oh, Liston. Liston. I'll win him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it all depends, you see. If you go to his gym, you have to say he wins. And if you go to Liston's gym, you say Liston will win. Yeah. Yeah. What it's about, uh, is there any intention for you to go back to America or, in fact, join the brain drain in a big guitar drain and stay there? Um, well, I don't We'd like to go stay. back, you know. but we wouldn't stay there. We yeah. love England. Here they come. And it's up to our police to show how wonderful they themselves are by getting the Beatles into their car, each all in one piece. Now, may we have our next contestant, please? Will you come in, sir? <laughs> Will you tell our panel, please, what your name is and where you are from? I'm Pete Best, and I'm from West Derby in Lancashire. Peter Best, and he is from West Derby, Lancashire, England. Now, Peter, if you'll whisper your secret to me, we'll show it at the same time to our audience at home. Here we go. You mean you came all the way from England just to tell us then? Oh, boy! <laughs> you ever had one of those days? A panel to help you classify Peter Best's secret. The clue concerns something he did. We'll start the questioning, please, with Best Myers. Well, one thing you did, Peter, was avoid getting a haircut in recent <laughs> days. Does this have anything to do with your secret? A little. Uh, could you be a new kind of uh, bug that we've uh, imported <laughs> from England? I might be. Uh, uh, do you sing, by the way? No. No. Do you have anything to do with your predecessors, with the Beatles at all? Yeah. You do? The answer to that is yes. $20 down, $60 to go. We go, please, to uh, Bill Cullen. Well, the, the, the Beatles did or do come from Lancaster. Uh, Lan Lancashire. Lancashire, do they not? Yeah. Uh, do you have anything to do with the Beatles' hairdo? No, no. Oh, heck, I was hoping you were their barber. I just... <laughs> that, blows, that blows my next five questions out of do you. Have, uh, did you have anything personally to do with the Beatles? Yeah. Do you still... Do you still have anything to do with the last question? Vaguely. Uh, just socially. Oh. All right. So now we've got 40 down and 40 to go, and we go, please, to Betsy. Did there used to be five Beatles, Peter? Yeah. And you were oh. one of them? That's it. Oh. Peter Best came all the way from England to tell us that two years ago he made a big career move. He left his job, which is not in itself unusual, except for one little thing. The job he had was as the drummer. Oh my, Ringo! He was he was Ringo's predecessor in the Beatles. And, We have here a picture, which I'll turn to camera one, of the Beatles when Peter Best, not Ringo Starr, was the drummer for the Beatles. And reading from left to right, there is John Lennon and George Harrison and Paul McCartney, isn't it? And our own Peter Best. You see him there, but he hasn't changed a bit. Thanks. Now, Peter, how did the famous Beatle haircut get started? Well, that started when John and Paul went to uh, France for a holiday. Mm -hmm. And they met an old friend of theirs there from Hamburg, and uh, he had his hair in the so-called Beatle fashion. And they took a liking to it, so out came the scissors. And one night, they came back, and... Uh, they just had the haircut. It was more uh, or less of a party accident then. Uh -huh. really? uh, how, how long were you with the Beatles? I was with them two and a half years. That was before they had the, that was before they had the hairdos, yeah, right? Yeah, that was it. Now, now I'm going to say the word, then. I'm sure it's on everyone's lips. Why did you leave the Beatles? <laughs> well, at that time, I... You know, thought I'd like to start a group of my own. Yes. And I thought that uh, at that time also that they weren't going to go as big as what they are now. 
he figured this was an act with no future, and so he might as well pull out and start an act of his own. So, <laughs> well, don't worry, no one's perfect. I understand that there are many groups in England who pattern themselves after the Beatles. How many groups are there currently in England? Mm, about 1,500. 1,500. Boy, it must be a noisy country nowadays, huh? All right, Peter, now you have your own group. What do they call, and how do they differ from the Beatles? Well, they're called the All-Stars. The All-Stars? Uh -huh. And we play our music a little heavier beat and a little faster. I see. We sing a little, you know, closer on the Sure. Group. Well, now, I know that you're happy having your own group, but, but do you ever have any regrets about having left this million-dollar outfit? Um, put it this way. It only hurts when I cry. It only hurts when, when I, I laugh. It only works when I laugh. <laughs> you make me want to hold your hand. <laughs> Well, you're a good sport. He came all the way over here to tell us that story. Goes back to England tomorrow. Peter Best, thank you very much for coming all the way from England. Good luck with your all stop. Chefo, Holland's National Airport, has seen a few VIPs next time, but only kings, queens, heads of state, small stuff like that. This time, it's the real thing, the Beatles. Jimmy Nichols, standing in for drummer Ringo Starr, who's sick at home, must be wondering what's hit him. Don't worry, he'll get used to it. First of all, you introduce yourselves. George Harrison, Paul McCartney, John Leffer, Jimmy Nichol. The question we just had from one of the uh, people in the audience is, were any of you in love? Me. Yeah. Yes, he's married. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Does that put you in the exceptional position? Oh, Being married? On Sunday, yeah. On Sunday. <laughs> Would you want to get married, the others? No, I don't like marriage. Why not? No good, no good marriage. It's good. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I don't know yet, but then I've got some more money. Cost money to get married? Well, you need a bit, don't you? <laughs> no. You, you need a new suit and a hat and that. Did you your know? wife expensive? <laughs> quite, quite. Yes. How much did she cost when you bought her? Uh, she was about 50 pounds in Nairobi. But she was second hand, <laughs> wasn't she? <laughs> was she, was she second hand? How dare you? What did he say? Yeah. Hoeveel in de Beatles te Hollandse meisjes? Um, well, yeah. uh, what, what do you think of Dutch girls, as far as you've seen them? Any views? Very good, yes. Very mm -hmm. good? Very what nice. Hmm? Why? What did you say? Why? Why are they good? Yeah. Well, all girls are good, actually, you know, but I mean... What makes a girl good? <laughs> what makes a girl good? I don't know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm just helping it. <laughs> bepaalde favoriete bandjes hebben, zoals Swing in Blue Jeans, Dave Clark 5, Fred in the Dreamers of zo. Ja, ja. Iets van die naartjes. Ja, ja. Well, you, you heard the names they mentioned. Whether you have any favorites in England uh, with a new yeah, band? Searchers. Searchers and the Rolling Stones, would I? Thank you. You're on, Jimmy. Uh, whether you find it difficult to take over the role of Ringo? Uh, no, not really. No. <laughs> as far as Ringo, I can never, um, I can never make up for what Ringo is. You know, how, how I just try. Um, until next Thursday. Next Thursday. Yes. So you sort of understudy. Yes, I am. You think of the great breaks? Oh yes. Yes, oh, yes. Treating you good? And now. <laughs> I'm translating the questions. Yeah. My own questions. Dat moet je wel weer. Whether you think that the hysterical public is necessary for your act. Not necessary, but it helps, you know, it, g it gives a good atmosphere. We we all love it. Do you think it is when hysterical? Because there's some is. Some no, is. but it's nice when there's a lot of noise it's going good atmosphere. on. It's like a football yeah. match. You know, when there's a lot of noise going on, it's it's good, it's a good feeling. Go. Go. Well, yeah. why is it always the girls? The more girls are interested. In Paris. Well, that's good. Yeah. Fellas, you know. If it was all boys, there'd be something funny. Beren, daar kan ik namelijk niet bij komen met het microfoon, maar die wilde graag weten. I think that I am more or less asked is whether you will go along with any change in taste. Uh, no. Well, you, you never know because we have 
Well, we come yeah, along with, with, anyway, with, with it. Yeah. But we don't notice that ourselves, but people always say that we've changed a bit. But we can't notice it. So we probably will change a little. But, we wouldn't um, play trad. We wouldn't do anything like drastic, like you say, with a big band or anything like that, because we don't enjoy that kind of music. You just do this kind of music because you enjoy it. Because that's... we like it. Well, that's, you know, that's the main reason. If we didn't, we'd give up tomorrow. What a day it was at Adelaide Airport. Arriving to meet the citizens were John Lennon, two other Beatle regulars, and Jimmy Nichol. Paul McCartney was on the beat as usual. Jimmy, of course, was deputising for Ringo Starr, who had been too ill to travel at the same time, but was coming along later. Who selected the name of the Beatles, and how did you derive this particular name? Was well, it was John Beatles? got the name Beatles in a very ages moment. ago, you know, when we wanted, when we needed a name, and everybody was thinking of a name, and he thought of Beatles. Why the B-E-A instead of the B-E-A? Well, no, actually, you know... Well, you know, if it was B-double-E, it was hard enough getting people to understand why it was B-A, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Paul, what do you expect to find here in Australia? Uh, Australians? <laughs> <laughs> do you have any acknowledged leader of the group? No, not right. really. <laughs> 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 well, we have on the balcony outside, is that right? We heard you stood on your head in the, on the balcony outside. No, we don't just... have to hear some rumors. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't stand there. Yeah? How did the tickets go in Hong Kong? Did you get full houses there? I yeah. think so. Yeah. Yeah. No, there was no, a few no. five quid seats. <laughs> yeah, five quid left. <laughs> five quid? Yeah, they were a bit hot, weren't they? Five I was heard you. Yeah, I was hot. Five me and five for five quid. <laughs> no, I was not saying you for two bars. <laughs> John, has the Mersey beat changed since you've been playing it? Oh, well, we still keep on saying there's no such thing as Mersey. It's something the press made up, you know. Well, we what do you, you play the roll. same way now as you did? It's just rock and roll, it just so happens we write most of it. Has Buddy yeah. Holly influenced your music at all, John? He did in the early days, obviously, you know. But, no, well, not obviously, but he, you know, he's one of the, bit, the greats. You know, so sort of James Serbo, though, didn't he? Oh, yeah, but he doesn't sing for him. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been practicing up your Australian accent? No, Carl, we're not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't get it. Yeah, you I think we'll be writing any uh, songs with Australian themes. Yeah. No, we never write themes about anything. Uh, just write the same. You, always <laughs> always <laughs> you play the kind of music you want to play or the kind of music you think people want to hear. No, we've been playing this kind of music for about five, six years or something like that. It's just rock and roll. It's just happened to be right. Well, what do you think made the difference that suddenly put you up above the other group? Well, we got a record contract. <laughs> 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 the Speaking of the... records, what record do you all agree on, generally, as your best recording? Not the best solo, but as the best recording musically. You mean our favourite? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we always like the one we just made, don't we? So it's Long Tall Valley for me. This is your latest one? I like it. Well, it's, it's quite new, you know. It's, I like it. It's not even the same. I, I like Sorry. <laughs> I, I like you can't do that. What do you like, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about you, Jimmy? Like you haven't seen anything. Well. Yeah, How do you like feel, Jimmy, being that. in with the Beatles? Pardon? How do you feel being in with the Beatles, a new cameras, standing in for Ringo? It's a good experience, man. How is Ringo? Um, he's much better. He joins them on Sunday. What do you do then? Um, I go back to London and uh, they're fixing up a band for me and I do some television. And he's away? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, he's progressing pretty well with your Beatle haircut. Yeah, well, I've been growing it for about three months. So. How long does it take to get a magnificent mane like this? <laughs> I don't know, I can't remember being without it. <laughs> do you ever go to the bar then, John? No, you know, I've known there cut since the film, the film, the woman on the film cut it good, but I don't trust anybody else. This is, this is the film Beatlemania, is it? No, it's no, not it's called that, that's another story. It's on Hard Day's Night. Hard Day's Night it's called. Are you satisfied with the finished product? Well, it's as good as anybody that makes a film who can't act, you know. <laughs> The arrival of the number one drummer, you can see why he's called Ringo, brought the Beatles up to full strength. Thousands more girls made happy. The koala bear showed with that Aussie wise, Ringo's with it. On now to catch up with the rest of the group. So Adelaide laid on another reception. hotel they had to come onto the balcony. These intercontinental Mersey Beat missiles have hit Australia for a pop six. Before long they'll be sighing for new worlds to conquer. The Beatles! The Beatles! 
No, he couldn't catch on. Hey, Byrne, is the tea ready yet? Yeah. <laughs> But you haven't uh, searched these cases. It's all, I know what's in them. What's inside them? <laughs> Money! <laughs> Tell you something. What? I still believe that we are definitely the best group in the country and we should definitely be on that Thank You Lucky Stars. Yeah, yeah, but maybe they wouldn't like us. I mean, wouldn't like us? No. You've got no confidence. Of course they'd like us. Oh. Mind you, there is something wrong with the act. Mm. Well, maybe it's our hair. <laughs> the hair, the hair's great. <laughs> The nose is possibly. <laughs> oh, he's starting. Yeah, he's no, oh, I but, see. But there is something. I can't think what it is. Well, I'll the say, hair. I behold it. <laughs> Listen, Archer, it's definitely the name. The name is definitely wrong for this group. What's wrong with the Mike Winter Six? <laughs> Archer, it, it doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's 1965. Gotta be with it. You know, that's it, Daddy. Oh, you know, wow. Well, well you what, know, we need something. Earthy, something a good name. Yeah. What about the Beatles? Beatles, you're joking. Oh, terrible. Terrible. That was good, George. That, that was good. That was good. That was good. That, well, that was excellent. I was <laughs> <good. laughs> a bit worried about him, you know. He's really good. The Beatles, now it's all right. Look, let's look at this thing scientifically, oh. shall we? You got it out as well. It was well done. Yeah, very good. <laughs> now, who's who's the top <laughs> of the hip parade now? now? Top of the hip parade is what's his name? Seller Black. Oh, let's call him. <laughs> Call ourselves Silla Black then. Oh. <laughs> Tell you what, let's watch television. Yeah. What's on now? What's on? What's on? You know, yeah. don't you? It's that big night out, isn't it? Oh, oh no, no, not big night out. That ro mm. Have you seen that show with those two fellas that keep getting blown up? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 absolute yeah. rubbish. That big yeah. one. Yes, and oh, the one with the glasses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cup of tea. Cup of tea. Yeah. Cup of tea. Yeah. 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 Get the cup of tea. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I'll have some chocolate biscuits. Oh, I'm losing weight. What? You've got to get rid of them poor fellas. Why? Why? Because they're holding me back, that's why. <laughs> why? They're holding you back? God, every, don't you know, they're, they're, they're jealous of me. They're jealous of you? But I mean, everybody knows I'm the sexy one in the group, they know that. I mean, you're too handsome for I'm them. too much too handsome. Yeah. You've got to get rid of them. Maybe you're right. Yeah, get your hair cut while you're at it. Yeah. <laughs> Tell them what? What? Tell you what to do. Yes, I bet we're stretched already there. <laughs> Go in there. Yeah. Tell them to pack up and get out. Pack up and get I can't do that. Why not? It's their flat. <laughs> Hey, listen. Yeah? Have you seen this fan letter here? No. Listen, could we please have Bernie Winters singing from me to you? Bernie Winters singing from me to you? It says. What's this? I've got one, look. What's this, Ringo? I do like Bernie Winters. He's funny. Yeah? <laughs> could he please sing I Want to Hold Your Hand? 
No, it must be a gag. Oh, so Request for Bernie? Somebody Plus just... Oh, there's another one, one yeah. From what somebody that? asking for Bernie Winters to sing She Loves You. I mean, look at that. Bad Bernie man. Winters to sing She Loves You? Yeah. Have you got one too, John? Yeah, I've got one too. It says, Dear Bernie, please sing All My Luggage. All My Luggage? <laughs> that sounds more like it. He can't spell. Look this way. Yes, it'll be all right. Please, could I hear the golden voice of Bernie Winters singing Till There Was You? Oh. Hey, we're not having all this. What are you messing up? Don't you lift your hands to me, young man. Don't lift your hands. And what have you got to say for yourself? What have I got to say to yourself? Yes. Shout, I smashed you right in the face. Oh, you did well. <laughs> <laughs> It's undoubtedly Park Lane's week of the year. All the signs here that the expected arrivals are the Beatles coming to the Dorchester for the Variety Club show business luncheon. George and Paul, and of course Ringo and John, were safe at last. Variety Club ties, the status symbol in show business. No difficulty for Ringo, and here with the Beatles was Brian Epstein, their famous manager. There had to be four silver hearts this year, one for each of the Beatles. The group are Show Business Personality Award winners, a split personality, but the kind of thing they take in their stride. It was a Merseyside shadow cabinet with the opposition leader conferring the award. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Barker, Mr. Dobson, and the press. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <coughs> I'd just like to say it's, it's very nice indeed to get, especially to get one each, because we usually have a bit of trouble cutting them in four. <laughs> I'd just like to say thank you very much. It's a great honour. Thank you. Now, Paul. Uh, same goes for me. Thank you very much for giving us this silver heart. But I still think you should, should have given one to good old Mr. Wilson. <laughs> Um, Ringo. Anyone who knows us knows I'm the one that never speaks, so I'd just like to say thanks a lot. <laughs> I'd just like to say the same as the others. Thanks for the Purple Hearts. <laughs> silver! Silver! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, I won't. We'd like to sincerely thank you all, and uh, we've got to go now, because the fella on the film wants us, and he says it's costing him a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thanks a lot. Awards of this sort are sometimes open to dispute. But in 1964, would anybody anywhere challenge the right of the Beatles? Uh, welcome to a young author from Liverpool. In fact, you are the first author from Liverpool I've ever seen. Great. But uh, your first book sold in 350,000 copies and came out this year. Is that right? That's right. That's right. And uh, tell me, you brought three of your friends. Could you please introduce yes, them? Yes, there's George Parasol, <coughs> Ringo Stone, and Paul McCharmley. And uh, did they have any, anything to do with your book? Uh, did uh, they help you or did they hinder you in any way? No, they typed it out for me. That's right. I mean, they Where can spell and you... Oh, they spell very greatly. That's nice. By the way, I read a review about it in Times Literary Supplement and then I read the book. And then I, start, I wonder, uh, are you influenced by Thurber or James Joyce? Uh, none of them. None James of them. Stewart. No. James Stewart. James Stewart and I Betty see. Grable. Yeah. Well, anyhow, I'm quite sure that uh, uh, the, our Swedish viewers would like to hear you read uh, one of your poems. Right. Good. <laughs> Good job, Nigel. <laughs> yeah. Half half he goes a merry sight, our little hairy friend. Half half upon hey. the lamppost bright. So like that. Half in round the bend. This, look. <laughs> this one's better. Is that better? Look. Ja, vad John Lennon säger och vad hans kompisar säger, det må de som kan Liverpoolska ha glädje av. Wonder on till truth makes all things plain. This man is Pyramus, if you would know. This beauteous lady, this, thing, this man presenteth wall, that vile wall which did those lovers sunder. And through walls chink, poor souls, they were content to whisper. 
This man with lantern, dog, and bush of thorn presenteth moonshine. This grisly beast here, Lion is by name. For all the rest, let Lion, Moonshine, Wall, and Lovers Twain at large discourse while they are, they do remain. Uh, uh, in the same interlude just before, that I once now by name present a wall, and such a wall is, as I would have you think, that had in it a granite hole or cheek, through which the lovers, Pyramus and Thisbe, did whisper often very secretly. Oh, Go back to Liverpool! Yeah. Oh! I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot. <laughs> and thou, a wall, a sweet and lovely wall, that stands between, that stands between her father's ground and mine. O thou, a wall, a sweet and lovely wall. <laughs> Show me thy chink <laughs> to blink through with my eye. But what see I? <laughs> no, no Thisbe do I see. A wicked wall, cursed be. He should not, because it's Thisbe's cue, and she comes in, and we look through the wall. <laughs> oh, woe, full often hast thou heard my moan. <laughs> oh, parted my fair pyramus and me. My jelly lips have often kissed thy stones. Oh, oh, I see a voice. Now will I to the chink. Smile like the girl my Thisbe's face. Up to the chink, then. Come along. The Hizzabee. <laughs> Discharge so, and being done, away walled the oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, puss. Come on, puss, puss. You ladies, you who fear the smallest monstrous mouse that walks the floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here when lion rough in wildest rage doth roar. Arr. And know that I, one Ringo the drummer, am. But if I was really a lion, I wouldn't be making all the money I am today, would I? <laughs> this lantern doth the honored moon present. Oh, Zach, come here, come here. This lantern doth the honored hey. moon present. Hey. 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 I, the man in the moon, that seem to be. Who? <laughs> Who? Look, you. All I have to say is to tell you that this lantern is the moon, you see. I'm the man in the moon. This thorn bush here is my thorn bush, and this doggy buggy here is my dog. And if you don't wrap up, we'll give you a kick in the... the eye. So this is old Nilly's tomb. Thank you. thy sunny beams. Remember, before we... <laughs> hello, hello, hello! What's what this? Hey, look, eyes do you see? How can it be? What dread... What dreadful dole is here? <laughs> thy mantle good, all covered in blood. <laughs> oh, dainty duck. Oh, dear. Roll out, Shakespeare. Come to you, confound, out sword, and what... <laughs> And wound that pap of Pyramus, that left pap, where heart does hop, thus die I, thus, <coughs> thus. <coughs> 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 
Now am I dead. Now I'm oh, worthless. Oh, well, you can't win them all. Tung, lose thy light. Moon, take thy flight. See you, George. <laughs> Dead, my dog. <laughs> Bring him to the rise. Oh, speak, speak. Quite <laughs> dumb. <laughs> Dead, a tomb must cover thy sweet eyes, those lily lips. <laughs> this cherry nose. <laughs> These yellow cowslip cheeks are gone, are gone. Lovers make moan. His eyes were green as leaf. <laughs> Tongue, not a word, not a, not word. a word. Not a word. Don't call that. Shut up! Not a word. Not a word. Come, trusty uh, sword. <laughs> Come, blade. My breast in broom. <laughs> and so farewell, oh, friends. Friend. Thus this begins. I do, I do, I do like to be. How I do like to be. The four lads from Liverpool are off again with the assistance of the justly famous Bobby. The daily ritual of going to work is like taking your life in your hands. Today's assignment is making their first movie, A Hard Day's Night, for United Artists. Behind barriers set up by police the night before, the fans urge their heroes on with the ear-splitting howl that has become a Beatles trademark. The location, Paddington Station in London, where the real business of movie-making begins. The crew and director busily set up shop. <laughs> Different spots around the station, production assistants select eager extras for the thrill of their lifetime. They're going to be in a hard day's night and doing what comes most naturally. Chasing John, George, Paul, and Ringo. This time for the camera. Imagine getting paid for all that fun. schedule is made to be followed. And even the Beatles have to stick to a time period. They pack themselves off to the afternoon location where the second crew is getting ready for them. There probably isn't anyone in the world who hasn't heard of La Scala Opera House. Here is that famous theater. Only this one is not in Milan. It's in London and playing host to another mob, a movie company, and the inevitable Beatles. Somehow, the four whimsical wonders have been sneaked past the waiting crowds and enjoy a few moments of relative peace. To prove that wonders never cease, producer Walter Kenton corralled 1,500 youngsters to fill the seats and make believe they're enjoying themselves. An accomplishment soon to get almost out of hand when the big scene starts on stage. Enter the Beatles, the universal cue for mass mayhem. It was only a matter of time before the Beatles made it. So came the summons to the palace. The news got round to the faithful that the world's number one group were to be invested by Her Majesty with the most excellent order of the British Empire. Last month, 75 teenagers from Pennsylvania petitioned Her Majesty the Queen to have the Beatles knighted. 
Well, this hasn't happened. But today I'm pleased to say that they have been made members of the most honorable order of the British Empire. Congratulations, John, George. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Tell you. me, how did you all react to this? Well, I went... <laughs> <laughs> Which means in sound. Whoopee. Well done. George. I well, I sort of went, wow, that's great. Ringo. Yes? About the same. Yes, really I think we all felt pretty well the same. Now, last Six. year in America, your record sold no less than $10 million worth. Do you think your export sales has something to do with this? Well, you know, somebody said it might have been that. The papers keep know. telling us it, mean, it's, uh, it was It could have been that, but it could have been... It might have been for tour in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you think you'll go back to the Commonwealth again? This was a sensational visit. Yeah. Well, you know, we probably will. It's up to Mr. Epstein, our manager. <laughs> what does this MBE mean to you all? How are you going to deck out to go to the palace? There's certain protocol to be observed. Are you going to dress up in morning dress? Yes, well, well, I think you've got to, haven't you? Yeah, we'll have to. We'll get yeah, them. What about the hair cut, Ringo? With well, we're not going to get it all cut off, you know. Someone said we can carry the hat, so that would be easier. I think Her Majesty will understand, you know. She may well do. From obscurity in a cellar in Liverpool four years ago and now to Buckingham Palace. <laughs> Gentlemen, what do you think everybody on the other side of the Atlantic is going to say to this? Whoopee, I hope. <laughs> yes, I hope. You never know, they might say boo or... They might say, uh, hello, cobber, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Or, hello, dear boys. Good on you, blue. Yeah. Well done. Oh, well done. Howdy, Europe. <laughs> Texas speaking. Now, so two of you have got married and you all live in well good domestic splendor. Has this affected That's your okay. writing, Paul and John? No, no it's easier know. to write with cushions and to, <laughs> you know, on, hard, on pieces of hard bench, which you know we were on hard benches before we made yeah, it. Yeah, you know, in the slime and the cellar of Liverpool. And it's much easier on a nice cushion. Your because. plans for tours for this year and next year? Uh, we're going to Europe next week. Next, next week. Next Sunday, actually. And then we come back. And, uh, and we go off to America. For two and a and half weeks. We do telly. Uh, oh, we do the Ed Sullivan. Good old Ed. Ed Sullivan. Hi, Ed. Is he on He's watching. He's watching in this one. Look. <laughs> there he is. All right, Ed. It's Mrs. Ed. Oh. <laughs> I'm Mr. Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Have you checked, gentlemen, whether you'll be able to wear your MBEs on any of these other foreign television programs? Well, I suppose once they've given them to us, we can wear them. Well, we don't look, look, you look a bit funny, though, know, going around with your medals hanging off, isn't it? Well, we could, we could <laughs> wear them on stage. <laughs> anyway, it hasn't changed your life to any great extent. No, no, it's just, no. we're just honoured, that's all. We're all delighted. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you very much. You. Okay. Thank, Thank you for coming. Goodbye. The Beatle boycott is still in effect. We haven't forgotten what the Beatles said. We meant more to kids than Jesus did, or religion at that time. I wasn't knocking it or putting it down, I was just saying it. The fact and it sort of, it is true, especially more for England than here. You know, I'm not saying that we're better or greater or comparing us with Jesus Christ as a person or God as a thing or whatever it is. You know, I just said what I said and it was wrong or was taken wrong and now it's all this. There have even been threats of, against your life have been record burning, have been banned from some radio stations. Does this bother you? Well, it worries me. Yeah, you know, it's bound to bother us. Do you think you're being crucified? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that at all. This is Doug Layton and Tommy Charles. We're reminding you our fantastic Beatle boycott is still in effect. Don't you forget what the Beatles have said. Don't forget to take your Beatle records and your Beatle paraphernalia to any one of our 14 pickup points in Birmingham, Alabama, and turn them in this week if possible. The Beatles, for a long time, have been able to, because of their tremendous popularity throughout the world, especially with the younger set, have been able to uh, say whatever they wanted to without any regard for judgment or maturity or the wisdom of it. And no one yet has challenged them to any tremendous degree where it might count. For three hours, uh, our three phone lines lit up, and they responded, and they said, uh, uh, get rid of the Beatles, ban the records. Well, I don't mind if he never plays them again. You see, this is the thing, you know, everyone seems to think that when they hear us say things like this, that we're so childish, you know, I mean, you can't say things like that unless you're a silly little child. But and if he was grown up, he wouldn't have done the thing, because he only did it for a stunt anyway. So, I mean, who's he to say about growing up? Who is he? Who is this guy? Who is Just he? Exactly? Who? The basic philosophies and the beliefs of the clan has always been to uphold Christianity. It's hard for me to tell through the mop heads and all of the 
conglomeration that they have, whether they're even white or black myself. I couldn't prove to you whether they're white or black. The only uh, attitude I could assume that they're interested in one thing, and that's the greenback dollar and what money they could get. If it would be popular to be black, I'm sure they'd consider themselves black. If it's popular to be white, they'd be white. All they're after is the fast buck that they can get. Ku Klux Klan, being a religious order, is going to come out here the night that they appear at the Coliseum here. And we're going to demonstrate with uh, different ways and tactics to stop this performance. The Klan is going to come out here because we're the only organization that will come out and make a stop to these accusations. This is nothing but blasphemy. How many Klaners will you have here? I shall have about 50 men in robes, and I'll have quite a few inside the stadium. We're known as a terror organization. I think we have a terror organization. We have ways and means to stop this if uh, this is going to be the case. Yes. Well, what uh, what ways and means? Well, I don't want to say this, but uh, there'll be a lot of surprises uh, Monday night, I believe, when they get here. You officers that are stationed in front of the stage behind the barricade, you will go to Mr. Morris Shapiro, the first aid man, and he will furnish you with earplugs so as to keep you from having a headache. If he runs out of earplugs, he has got some cotton. We have a detention room set up within the Coliseum. That detention room is room D. Any person that you arrest or bring downstairs for ejection will be brought to room D. You will take the names, the addresses, and the telephone numbers. We will not allow any dancing, running up and down the aisles, or crowding up in front of the stage. All these parties will be warned and ejected from the Coliseum. Is that clear with everybody? Thank you. Is that your first trip south? No, no, we've been to Texas before. Uh-huh. Uh, where are you going when you leave here? Um, I'm, I'm Cincinnati. Cincinnati, that's it. Cincinnati, yeah. and yeah. how long are you going to be in the States? Uh, about two, two more weeks. Two more weeks? Yes. Uh -huh. What did you have for lunch? Oh, I, did, <laughs> I didn't eat much. I didn't eat much. Anyway, I must go, it's getting boiling. All right, thank you very much. Here, give it two. <laughs> the police lied. What did they lie about, honey? They thought if they'd come down there, we could see them. And you came all the way out here? Now, just, do you have a ticket for the show tonight? Yes. Well, are you going to the afternoon or evening performance? The evening. And who do you say lied to you? The police did. What did they tell you, honey? They thought if they'd come down there. And they wouldn't let you come down here? <laughs> Is that anything to cry over? <laughs> when you wait two and a half years, it is. What do you like best about America? Um, I don't know. Everything. Can't you tell us one thing? <laughs> I like the American audience. What do you like best about America? I think it's the size and the, and the pace of it, you know, it's so different to Britain. It knocks me out, you know. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Paul? And you, yes. what did you want to do before you became a Beatle? Um, nothing. I didn't want to do anything else. <laughs> Honest. And what do you like best about America? Um, the music. Uh, American music. How does that Come differ from that. your music, English? Well, it's better, I think. You know, the, the, the kind of stuff we like, like the American okay, colored groups and things. That's better. And also, it's on every minute of the day. You know, in England, it's only on, say, for a couple of hours. It's on all the time here. Thanks, Paul. John? Yes, yes. You're in the way, Ruth. <laughs> what did you want to do before you became a Beatle? Uh, uh, nothing, really. I just wanted to be rich, you see. Well, I wanted to be a Beatle, mainly. What do you define as a Beatle? Uh, as what we are, you know. A group singing and selling records. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> Yeah, 
Uh, what were those sunglasses you were wearing this afternoon? What were those sunglasses you were wearing this afternoon, Joe? Uh, sunglasses. I mean, they were really special, they were green. I just found them in, um, can. They're just sort of ordinary sunglasses, I mean, they've got a mirror on one side, so nobody can see it. Is a letter someone has left for George Harrison. So these are the chairs they'll be sitting in, so we're going to be talking to the Beatles in just a few minutes. Uh, now, the way we'd like to bring you is concerned is those who do want to ask questions, would you please put up your hands and then we'll take them in order. Are they enjoying their tour here in America this time? Are the Beatles enjoying their tour here in America? Very much, my dear. Hello, hello. Yeah, good. I'm a great uh, Paul McCartney, Paul, uh, what about you and Jane Asher? Uh, what's the story on you and Jane? Uh? <laughs> well, uh, I haven't said anything to anyone, but people keep writing about it in the papers and things. So, uh, I'm, I'm getting to believe it, you know. <laughs> Do the boys have any Atlanta acquaintances? Not yet. No. <laughs> When you look at your crowds, do you feel you can maneuver them? We can't do anything with them. <laughs> Sometimes you can't even see them. At this time, the mayor of Atlanta is going to present the key to the city to the fabulous four Beatles. Hey, hey, let me take a picture of someone right here with Paul, and we got it there. All right, we got a picture of Paul and uh, his friend there, and uh, a lot of the fans are crowding around here at the press conference today. Well, it looks like things are sort of getting a little bit out of hand right now. Vegas. It's very nice, thanks. Was it? Very good. Oh, it's a you film man. How do you do? Just sit down. Okay. Good. Did you uh, play the slot machines? Yeah, but we didn't win, you know. How was your reception in Las Vegas? It was great. Marvelous place. In fact, you know, so far we've had great receptions. Just got it. 
is the best actor. I think Ringo is. Ringo. I think you are. Oh, no, I think you are. No, you are. No, it's you. <laughs> Okay, see what those lights are. Yes? Oh, I got my start playing the drums from you. After I listened to you, I started playing them. Oh, you'll never get anywhere if you listen to me. <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah, I was wondering how long have you been playing the drums? Uh, about... When you really started? Uh, 30 years, isn't it? Yeah, about, about seven years now. Yeah. How old are you? I'm 14. Oh, well, you're okay. Same age as us? Great. By the time he learns a lot of machine, do you? Ringo, do you have any time off in this tour? And if um, you do, what do you plan to do during the time off? I think we have about five days off in L.A. and start on Monday, and we're just going to sit around, you know. Or start your own label, and if so, where is it going to be? We'd never start our own label. It's too much trouble, you, you know. You invest heavily in some of the companies that has the Beatles, or...? I don't know. It's all that'll be all up to Mr. Epstein. How long you know. before your contract does terminate with Capital? I don't know. Yeah. I don't even remember yeah. signing it. A year. It lasts another year. Oh. What did he say? <laughs> oh, fine, thanks, fine. Am I on? Hey, what's fine. the name of your station? <laughs> Hi, John. Hi, Paul. Hi, Yeah. If you ever come to Ohio, stay at my house. Oh, thank you. That's the best thing they've ever got, man. That's great, man. It's fab. That's marvelous. Well, that's fine. That's fine. It's fab, but it's, it's, it's great. You got one for me? I wish we had one for everybody. I'd like to ask you all a personal question about your hair. Right? It's a little long, too, and how can you sleep at night with that long? Well, you well, when you're asleep, you don't notice. <laughs> How do you sleep with your arms and your legs still attached? Just the same. We got used to it over the years, you know. People have only had short hair since the World War. So That's they've been sleeping for all those thousands of years with long hair. I tell you, it's just as much a problem as having short hair, which to you seems like it's no more problem. of a problem having short hair, having to keep it short. How are you used to sleeping with it short? I don't know how you live. Maybe oh, that's really? why we've been up every night for the last few yeah. years. Yeah, maybe that's, that's why. why we have parties. That's it. We, that's can't, it. we can't sleep with this long hair. They moved in and out of the motel. They uh, seemed to mingle with quite a number of young girls who were on the sidewalk. These were for the most part, primarily Minneapolis girls. Uh, at midnight, we called the curfew. We told the kids that uh, they were in violation of it, those under 18 years of age, and they would have to move on. It came to our attention at that time from a couple of the girls on the sidewalk that they had friends who they were waiting for that were within the motel. We then felt, of course, that the only place they would be is on the fifth floor of the motel where the Beatles were housed. We went to the fifth floor, and uh, we completely shook down the fifth floor, doing this with the aid of pass keys, knocking on doors, and uh, telling people that uh, the curfew was now uh, enforced and that they would have to have guests leave the hotel. What was their reaction to this enforcement? Some of the members of the troop, Phil, became very indignant. They told us that Minneapolis was a very narrow-minded town, as were its police officials, and that other cities had been very tolerant uh, to the parties that they had held in their rooms. One of their uh, group with a British accent uh, told me that they would never come back to Minneapolis, and I remarked to him that if they did not come, it would be too soon for me. Was this because of the enforcement? I believe so, Phil. They, uh, they were very irate about that, and uh, they could not understand why our bars closed at 1 o'clock, nor could they understand many other things. We had no trouble, Phil, with three of the Beatles, because they had, upon returning from the show at Met Stadium, had gone to the hotel, had had a lunch, and had gone right to bed. We did have trouble, however, with uh, the report of a girl in one of their rooms, that of Paul McCartney. We did, however, get the manager of the Beatle Troop to uh, announce himself uh, <clears throat> at Mr. McCartney's room and tell him that the girl would have to leave the room or we would have to force entry into the room. Uh, we told all members of the troop who were causing us a problem that they were in violation of a city ordinance, that of false hotel registration.
where only the person registered in the room may reside there. We did remove several girls from the hotel. We removed a couple of them from a room that had been reserved for a dining room, and they were in bed in this room. Are you a Beatle fan? No, sir. I hear the music around my house, but I'm not a Beatle fan. Do you expect any calls as a result of this? Yes, sir, I do expect quite a few calls, Phil. Uh, it just seems that uh, every time that we do take an enforcement action, we do get some calls. George, there's been some remarks accredited to the Beatles that you aren't too appreciative of all the jelly beans being thrown at you on your tour. No, it's a bit dangerous, you know, because a uh, jelly bean traveling about 50 mile an hour through the air, if it hits you in the eye, well, you're finished, you know, you're blind, aren't you? So we've, you know, we've never liked people throwing stuff like that. We don't mind them throwing streamers, but jelly beans are a bit dangerous. in Seattle saying that you are uh, a menace, you bring out the destructive instincts in teenagers and you ought to be banned. A psychiatrist in Seattle said they are a menace to teenagers and bring out destructive... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he must have been sick. <laughs> That's the way, George. Do you think that Los Angeles has been the stop in which you've had more press coverage and more reporting on than any of the other stop? And if so, why? He asked me if it was more important. It probably is. And I don't know why, because we were told it is. <laughs> Do they plan to visit Iron Curtain countries like uh, Hungary, Russia? Do you plan to visit Iron Curtain countries? Well, we don't plan on visit visits. <laughs> visits. Our manager does, so ask him. <laughs> What movie actors would you like to meet in Hollywood? Paul Newman. Paul Newman. What movie actors? Jay Mansfield. Uh, would you care to venture a guess as to how long you think your success as the Beatles might last? No. No. No, no it's gone. No. I asked how long would you like a couple of months ago? Just a moment, please. I asked Elvis a couple of months ago if the Beatles bugged him, and he said not at all. He was very happy about the whole thing. I'd like to ask no what the boys said, what that. kind of opinion the boys oh, got about Elvis. What opinion do the Beatles have of Elvis Presley? We've got all his early records. Hello, Joe. That's true. Joe. Put it into your round jacket. We're in the wardrobe in mothballs. Yes. Uh, I'm going to ask the Beatles what they think of Barry Goldwater. What do you think of his job? I don't know. Well, what kind of a what kind of a musical background do you uh, have? Do all of you have before you started out? Well, uh, nothing, not really. Not really. No formal. Yeah. You, know. you just started. Uh, you just started together and uh, sort of blended in the group. Crap. Crap. This is your AP. A and a a dice game. A dice game. A dice game. Ah. You thought it was something else, didn't you? You're a naughty journalist, let don't you? you? Well, let me ask you this. Uh, many groups have had a lot of trouble because of uh, disputes that break out among the members of the group. Do all of you get along pretty well? Well, we've been each other's friends for years now, a long time. Um, I've never met them yet. You know, I knew George and John at school. I don't even know the girls. And so we just, we are each other's friends, so we get along. A rubbish. You get along as well pretty as well. best friends do, yeah, yeah which never. is lucky. Yeah. It's good. And that's nothing. I know a lot of jokes and nearly old private jokes. Anyway. I wonder, uh, I wonder uh, if we could, uh, I don't know if Ringo's attention there. Well, you, you know, the magazine's all true, but I know it's a baby, it's a lie. What do you think about this reception here now with all of these cameras? Uh, we even have live TV cameras and all of the news here. Did you expect this kind of a uh, reception? I don't even know the baby. I'm telling you that for sure. It's a dirty lie. I don't know what the slander laws are over here, but I'm certainly going to investigate them. <laughs> 
Oh, you see the stones up there? You've been on your uh, second tour of the United States for two weeks. How was it? Uh, three weeks, excuse three me. Two weeks, yes. It was very enjoyable. Most enjoyable, yes. Very successful, too. Well, now, uh, that uh, was not true of the first one, was it? Oh, no. But we only came over here on the first one so that we could get ourselves known, so to speak. Uh -huh. And then when we went back, things started happening for us. Well, uh, why? Why did they start happening? I don't really know. Some, something sort of chemical reaction seemed to have happened somewhere. Well, do you think that perhaps the general public started getting maybe a little bit tired of the Beatles and looked for something new? No, I don't know about that. Uh, um, what would you, could you say to a thing like that? Yes, I suppose so. Uh, do you have to get those? <laughs> no. No, no. Derek's on the I don't know. Hollywood. I don't know, honestly. No. People, you have 10 minutes, so don't push. Can I have a rotation of photographers, please? All you people in the front get back. Let the people in the back up. <laughs> Sir, it's time to rotate towards the back, please. I'd just like to simplify things a little by suggesting that the two gentlemen with the roving mic select the questioners rather than me because they can move around faster. So if you want to ask a question, please draw the attention of one of the two roving microphone men. Uh, my question concerns uh, money. Uh, I was wondering if you still have an arrangement with the U.S. Internal Revenue Department to pay your taxes to England through them. Another part of uh, the question is, how much money have you grossed in your current U.S. tour, and is it true that oh. you lost... We don't know money about, about that. We don't know about that. We don't do the money side of it, you know. Uh, Brian does that. And we don't particularly worry about it. tell us what we get in the end. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, taxes. Thing. We pay tax and things, but we don't know how much or how much we've made or anything, you know, because uh, if we were going to worry about that, we'd be nervous wrecks by now. I'd like to direct this question to Messrs. Lennon and uh, McCartney. In uh, a recent article, Time magazine put down pop music, <laughs> and they referred to uh, Day Tripper as being about a prostitute oh, yeah. and Norwegian Wood about as being about a lesbian. Oh, yeah. Now, I just wanted to know what what your intent was when you wrote it and what, sh what your feeling is about the Time magazine criticism of the music that is being written today. We were just trying to write songs about prostitutes and lesbians, that's all. <laughs> do you have any plans? <laughs> Do you have any plans you to can't do use it on work the air, separately uh, in the future? <laughs> Can you repeat that question, yes. please? Will you be working separately in the future? Or together? Pardon? It's all together, probably. Together? Aren't, uh, John <laughs> Lennon, aren't you doing the picture alone? Yeah, but I mean, that's only in the holiday bit. No. I see. In between Beatle. Fred Paul from KASK. First of all, I'd like to say hi to you all again. It's that's really Fred. good to see hi. you. And <laughs> go on, I'd like go to ask on. a question that you've never been asked before. Oh, no. oh. What are you going to do oh, when the bubble bursts? Oh. <laughs> so, Both for it. You know, that's no a personal fair. in joke. He used to ask it at every press conference we went to to keep the party going. Do you think we'll have another tour again next year? Ask could be Brian. Fred. Could, could be, be Brian. Does that? Thank you very much. He does a lot of it, Fred. <laughs> Outside in Hollywood tonight, you had to arrive in an armored truck, and the truck was swarmed by adoring fans. What is the situation wherever you go? Do you ever have a, uh, an opportunity to walk out in the street without being recognized? Or can you walk into a, a theater to see a movie by yourself? Or if you go and the lights are down. We can do that in England. It's easier in England than it is here. And it's mainly because we know England better. No, it would also be easier to do it if we were on tour, you know. Because we're on tour, people know where we are, that's why we have a crown. <laughs> oh, Chris, I wear that. Paul, Paul, 
Many of the top artists and musicians in the pop field today have said that the Beatles have been a major influence in their music. Are there any other artists who have a, an important influence on you? Oh yes, nearly everyone. You know, we we pinch as much from other people as they pinch from us. You know. Uh, is it possible to raise the level on the, both of the roving microphones, please? The boys are a little deaf. Ringo. <laughs> Ringo. Oh. Ringo, do you carry a wallet pictures of your baby with you? Uh, no. No? Why? I don't carry photos of anything, you know. Thank you. <laughs> you can remember. You know. uh, may I ask about the song, uh, Eleanor Rigby? What was the motivation or inspiration for that? Two queers. <laughs> John, um, did you ever... <laughs> Two barrel boys. Oh, this is getting disgusting, this... Pre... What? John, did you ever meet Cass with the Mamas and Papas? Yes, and she's great, and I'm seeing her tonight. <laughs> good. Yes, yeah, she's good. Uh, have you ever trained or used beetle doubles as decoys? Uh, no, no. No, no. We tried to get Brian Epstein to do it. He wouldn't do it. <laughs> uh, Ringo, uh, one question. Uh, how much did you contribute to What Goes On? And are you contributing to any other Lennon-McCartney compositions? I, um, about five words to What Goes On, and not, I haven't done a thing since. <laughs> <laughs> like the dresses to John and Paul, uh, you write a lot of stuff that other people steal from you and also purchase from you in different arrangements, uh, Ella Fitzgerald and the, a lot of these Boston Pops and stuff like that. When you listen to this on the radio or records and stuff, how do you feel about them using your pieces and changing them around to suit their styles? Depends how they do it, you know. The thing is, they don't steal it. No, I know that. Well, you just said they did. Well, sometimes. <laughs> Okay. No, they, I mean, you know, it's, once we've done a song and it's published, anyone can do it. So, you know, the, uh, whether we like it or not depends on whether they've done it to our taste. You know, well, then let's we'll ask it this way. Who do you think does it the best, the Beatles songs? Us. <laughs> Who? Us. Oh. <laughs> uh, for those of us that have followed your career from the early days of Liverpool and Hamburg, and the pride in you being awarded the MBE and the dismay of the unwarranted adverse publicity of late. The question is, individually, what has been your most memorable occasions and what has been the most disappointing? Mm. Well, I do. You know, there's so many. <laughs> I think Manila was the most disappointing. Yeah. And the most exciting yet to come. Uh, gentlemen, maybe the most disappointing. Gentlemen, uh, there was quite a laugh when you went uh, on the stock market with your stock. How is your stock doing? Fine, thank well, you. it went down, but it's coming up again. It's gone it went down. down it's it's bit, the same uh, as any other stock, you know. It goes down. down every time, and the LPs drop out. They all think they're buying bits of records. All of you, Leonard Bernstein likes your music. How do you like Leonard Bernstein? Very good. He's, you know, great. One of the greatest. I'd like to direct this question to George Harrison, if I may. What's your uh, new address? <laughs> <laughs> George, uh, before you left England, you made a statement that um, uh, you were going now to America to be beaten up by Americans. Uh, do, you, do you mean to say in so many words that you feel that the American fan is more a hostile fan? No, not Britain, at all. Or a more enthusiastic fan? Actually, I, did, I said that when we arrived back from Manila. They said, what are you going to do next? And I said, we're going to rest up before we go and get beaten up over there. Merely beaten up is just... So really, we just got sort of shoved around a bit. Jostled. Jostled around in cars and sure, planes. Probably. So, you know, that's all it is. Well, do you think that's more an enthusiastic fan than a hostile fan, would you say? I think uh, there's definitely more enthusiastic fans. I but if anyone beat us up, it's not the fans, isn't it? Yeah, the fan thing, I think, they proved it themselves, you know, after this. We found out that there are a lot of fans who are great. Mm. And all the ones we lost, I think, we don't really mind anyway. Because if they can't make up their minds, who needs them? Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to ask about the, uh, your image, the image scrimmage, and I'll direct this to anybody. Uh, <clears throat> how has your image changed since uh, 63 
Is it uh, a little more, uh, is it the same? An image is shiny? how you see us, so, you know, you can only answer that. You're the only one that knows. Who's that? Oh. It's you. Oh, yeah. well. No, I want to get your opinion. Is it a little tarnished now? Is it more realistic, or what would you say it is? Oh. I know, I have my opinion, we but... We haven't got uh, any tags for our opinion. We can't tell you our image, you know. We can only, our, our image is what we read in the newspapers, and that's the same as you read, you know. The, I mean, we know our real image, which is nothing like our image. <laughs> Forget it. And, uh, and uh, what I meant to say was... Uh, I like take two bricks. <laughs> Who is the young man with the lengthy haircut to your right rear? Right rear. That's good old Dave, isn't it? Where is he? Who That's is Dave it? Dave from the uh, burn. A mate of ours. Your hoy mateys. Shy, Are shy. you ever planning to record in the United States, and why haven't you yet? We tried, uh, actually, but it was a financial matter. Mm, mm. Bit of trouble over that one. No, we tried, but uh, it didn't come politics. Up. Hush, hush. Dice. Mr. Lennon, is it true you're planning to give up music for a career in the field of comparative religion? No. <laughs> is that another of the jokes going on? <laughs> I'm sure you've all heard of the many beetle burnings and beetle bonfires. And I was wondering, do you think American girls are fickle? All girls are fickle. Well, the photos we saw of them were a sort of middle-aged DJs and 12-year-olds burning a pile of LP couples. Uh, this question is directed to Paul and John. You have written uh, quite a few numbers for Peter and Gordon, and I understand they don't like it because they think that it's you writing the song that makes it popular. Do you plan to write any more songs for them? Uh, they, you know, if we write songs for they ask us to write songs for them if we, we do it. I mean, they don't mind it. They like it, but it's... People come up and say, ah, we see you just getting in on the Lennon McCartney bandwagon. That's, that's why um, they did that one with, with, with our names not on it, woman because everyone sort of thinks that's the reason they get hits. It's not true, really. Uh, gentlemen, uh, what do you think would happen to uh, you four if uh, you came to an appearance without the armored truck and without police? We'd get in a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't make it. We couldn't do it. It depends, you know. Sometimes we could have easily made it much better without the armored truck. But today, probably we wouldn't have. You think you'd be physically harmed? Oh, yeah, probably. What do you think? Yes, I think so. Uh, could be. Uh, gentlemen, the uh, New York Times magazine of Sunday, July 3, carried an article by Maureen Cleave, <laughs> which uh, she quotes the Beatles, not by name, as uh, saying, show business is an extension of the Jewish religion. Would you mind amplifying Did she say that? that? Uh, I said that to her as well. No comment. Oh, come on, John. Tell me what you I mean. I mean, you can read into it what you like. You know, it's just a little old statement. It's not very serious, you know. Paul, are you getting married? And if so, to who? Oh, um, they're probably getting married, yes. But I mean, I don't know when. I've got no plans and things. I want to make these the last three questions, John? I was wondering, under what condition did you write in his own right? That sort of wild, uh, those kicky words. I mean, how did you, uh, you know, put the, piece them together? I don't know. And do you have any more books coming? Oh, uh, well, um, yes, and I can't answer that. You know, it's just the way it happens. Any more books coming? I didn't think, now, how can I do this? Sit down and give an author, Just like an author. <laughs> John. I hope so, you know. John? I don't know. It'll never be the same. I understand there's a suit pending against the Beatles by Peter Best, who claims to be a former member of the Beatles. Is that oh. true? Was he once a former? Uh, I think he's had a few, but we don't bother with those. If, is this the last question? Yes, Are all of your news conferences like this? No. Well, uh, <laughs> well, that's not the. I'm question. talking about all of the uh, all of the reporters uh, or would be reporters or semi reporters that show up. Are you besieged by these kind of people throughout the tours that you travel here in the United States? You can't always tell the would be's from the real thing. <laughs> Jim.
just this is only the beginning this this 60s bit was just a sniff that the 60s was just waking up in the morning you know and we haven't even got to dinner time yet and i can't wait you know i just can't wait i'm so glad to be around and it's just going to be great and there's going to be more and more of us and whatever you're thinking there mrs grundy of south <laughs> birmingham on toast you know you don't stand a chance a you're not going to be there when we run in it and b you're going to like it when you get less frightened of it you know and it's going to be wonderful and i believe it and of course we all get depressed and down about it but when i'm down or when john and yoko's down Desmond will be up or somebody mm -hmm. else will be up. There's always somebody carrying the flag and beating the drum, you know. So they, whoever they are, don't stand a chance because they can't beat love, because all those old bits from religion and that about love being all powerful is true, you know. Mm -hmm.